Hi all. I want to do a series of videos from something which I became impressed with as a viable strategy for winning, especially in the longer time limits. And I'll call the strategy, I suppose, in a nutshell, playing the opponent as well as the position, but also, you know, trying to play a bit more slowly yourself. So, um, what happens in the Gibraltar tournaments? I had one of the games was a bit of a disaster with a pass pawn I didn't queen, as you might have seen from an earlier video. And it was in the last three rounds I had a boost of confidence through attending a night lecture given by a grandmaster Hitachison. And Hitachison, he's a friend of Carlson, and he runs a school for for players from um, no Norway. And um, you know, Carlson was one of the you know students, his students, and basically um, he describes m the many hats of Carlson's play. You know how he's risen to be like the world number three now, and one of the hats is this ability to put slow, continual pressure on the opponent. So it's not as if he's, you know, puristically trying to blow the opponent away from the outset. He's just, you know, maintaining tension in the position until the opponent cracks up. I suppose if you've watched boxing, you've often wondered, you know, why didn't they just try and punch each other, you know, uh, to, to victory? They, they often just put their defences up, because they're actually wearing out the opponents. The opponents are becoming more tired, and then later you see them, you know, unleash, you know, a series of, of punches. Let's look at this game, which was one of the games in the lecture. Um, so, Carlson was playing white in the Olympiad against Michael Adams, who's the in England, the UK number one player. Um, so Carlson's, you know, still higher rated than Adams, 26, sorry, 2786, Adams 2734. So D4 knight of 6, C4, E6. So we have here Adams wanting to play the Nimzo Indian defence. Now Carlson plays instead for the Queen's Indian, he doesn't want the pin, he plays knight F3. After B6 he now plays G3. So we have his standard Queen's Indian territory so far. So at the moment there's really nothing distinctive, hundreds of Grandmaster games are being played in this variation, which um, you know is is um, is quite common. But here is a less than common move, Bishop F4. So maybe you know Colson um, or his his team in preparation, they thought this would be a good move because it gets you know a little bit out of book, but it doesn't actually promise much of an advantage. But for the strategy demonstrated in this game about playing against the opponent, that actually doesn't matter. The tension is maintained in the position. You know, there's there's less simplification in this kind of quiet opening. So we'll see now that Adams played d5, and in the next few moves, you know, Adams seems content to quickly, you know, get a position where he has hanging pawns because he wants to challenge the centre. So after knight e5, he plays knight a6. So he doesn't mind the idea of c5 and potentially getting these two hanging pawns on c5 and d5. But for for an exchange of that, you know, his his pieces will all be quite active. Um, there's a potential liability of having a, an isolated D pawn, but that doesn't bother Adams too much either. So after Castles, he does play C5, and after CD, Knight takes D5, Carlson takes on D5, and Adams takes for the pawn. So potentially we have here, you know, two weak hanging pawns. After DC, Adams even, you know, he takes with his Knight, where well, he had placed it on A6 with the idea of, of recapturing on C5 with his Knight. Actually, let's, let's just quickly quickly look. Is is B C that bad? Well, Ribka thinks maybe you know Rook C one or Queen A four or Queen B three. You know, slightest advantage to White. Okay, but anyway, Knight takes C five. So in theory, you know, Adams has got a structural problem, but in practice, this is going to be quite difficult to exploit. Now, here is where you know the, the idea is that basically um, it's, a, it's as if Carlson's he's trying to put Adams through a long, torturous exam. You might have often had cases, you're going to go to a tournament and you're, you're a bit, you know, scared of losing or, or you, you think you're going to have a tough game. Have you ever thought psychologically to think, I'm going to put my opponent through a long, hard, torturous exam? How you, would you do that? You would do that through maintaining the tension in the position, not doing anything spectacularly committal, not going into complications, tactical complications, combinations, forcing sequences, but just keep the pressure going in a relentless fashion. But not only that, ideally you want to make small improvements to your position at the same time and future-proof your position for the end games which might arise. So we're going to have a look to see how Carlson does that. 
So bishop f6, now knight d3. Nothing ma much is going on here. So knight e6, queen d2. And this is actually one of the reasons, initially I, I would have never you know, done this game as, as a YouTube annotation. I didn't think there was you know, something exciting about it. But there is from a psychological angle. Because um, you know, white is, is, is offering that, that uh, bishop on, on f4, but uh, black really doesn't want more exchanges. You know, d5 would be, would be you know, targeted, obviously, with, with knight on f4, bishop here, queen. You know. He has to be a little bit careful about his, his isolated d-pawn at the moment. He plays queen e7, and now we see bishop e5. So, okay, Colson's prepared for a little bit of simplification there now with bishop e5. So let's see the next few moves now. The evaluation here from Rivka is at 0 0.07 at a low depth. So it's really nothing much for White. What has White achieved from the opening? But it's here that the grilling can really start. So um, E3, by the way, you know, Carlson is putting all his pawns on dark squares. And he's done this in other games, which there was this game against the 2200, which was also demonstrated in the same theme. And even the queenside pawns, they're put on dark squares. Except in this other game against the 2200, there was an amazing decision by Colson to put his A pawn on A3 instead of A5. And, and that was to do with later in the end game, the king, you know, not wanting to block any entrance point in the end game. So we're going to see now Carlson future proofing his position. He's putting his pawns on dark squares a little bit and also making sure, you know, the D pawn is, is fixed at the moment. So knight E1, queen E2, seemingly nothing move. And actually, you know, theoretically, the position is dead equal. So this is why, you know, this is a strategy which is playing against the opponent. It's not with the idea of offering a draw. It's the, the idea of long, continuous pressure. So queen b5 is a probing move. Um, you know, a slightly annoying, but no, no big deal. You know, Adams, he does something about the rook. He protects it. Actually, let's, you know, have a look here. b4 is is a sharp move but it's no good here if b4 bishop a6 and actually that would be the end of white because the queen is trapped so um so that's a good way of protecting the rook setting a little trap so carlson just just plays his, his queen to b4 so the, the dark squares are also a little bit more vulnerable because you know black hasn't got that dark square bishop so this is um being able to move the queen around on the dark squares is, is a nice slow form of torture here without black being able to do anything so Adams actually attacks the queen once more with a5. A little bit of a weakness potentially on the queen side is being created here. But on the other hand, it's reinforcing the knight's position on c5 to try and discourage b4 from white. But as we'll see later, actually b4 occurred much later, which is interesting. Um, so the queen anyway retreated to d2. And now we see knight e6. And now knight f3. So again, you know, white is not really doing much. The position is still roughly theoretically equal. So let's look at these moves. Again, the queen goes back to e2. And now h3. Okay, a slightly committal move. But maybe, you know, the king could be tucked on h2. a3. This is, again, you know, putting all the pawns on dark squares is opposite the opposite colour in general to this bishop, which is a strategy Carlson's employed, employed, you know, previously. So rook d2, you know, maybe you know, the rook is slightly better on d2 than d1. It avoids any potential harassment with bishop a4, perhaps. But it also supports queen d1, putting extra pressure on d5, potentially. So bishop a4 stops queen d1. Now king h2, so there was a point with that h3, just to tuck the king on h2. Again, white's not doing very much. Bishop b3. And now Colson plays queen a6. A slightly annoying move. And, you know, what, what is Adams going to do about the b6 pawn? Okay, he protects it with queen d8. And now the queen moves back to d3. So you see, again, Carlson is basically trying, trying to keep the game going and trying to keep pressure on and try to make small improvements to the position and try and get the opponent to make mistakes and collapse. So it's really playing against the opponent in a way this policy of not making committal moves. The opponent is has also inferior structural weakness on d5, but it's no big deal. But here, Adams, I don't know, maybe this is a sign that he slight, gets slightly annoyed with White's play. He plays um, bishop c4, and after queen c3, he feels the need to exchange off the light square bishops. Um, 
very soon, very soon, sorry, not, not in this position, bishop a2, queen d3, so the bishop returns to c4, and now Colson plays queen c2. So it's really provoking Adams to, to do something here. And he does something, he plays bishop f1. So this is the sign that, you know, maybe you know, the opponent has been provoked to do something active. But is this a big deal that Adams is exchanging off the light square bishop?